What's you guys got another video here for you. This mini PC can replace your desktop PC. This is the Geekom AS5 AMD Ryzen 9 5900HX. This comes with 32 gigabytes of RAM, which is upgradable to 64 gigabytes of RAM. And it also comes with one terabyte of internal M.2 SSD NVMe storage in here. The price on this one is 589 pounds at the time of making this video. This is what you can expect to get inside the box. You're gonna get your power cable, here, this will be different for each country depending where you buy it. Then you've got your power brick, which is basically going to power the actual uh, mini PC itself. You've got a barrel connector on there, which goes into the back of the mini PC. You can pause the screen here and try to read those specs. I can't see them. But here we have a, a HDMI cable here, pretty long one. And also we have a bunch of different screws for upgrades. Whether you want to put an SSD in here, it gives you a capability of upgrading with these screws. So it has got two M.2 slots on here on this device. You've got your user manual, and we also have our unit. Let's take a closer look here. Now, the Geekom AS5 is powered by ASUS, which means it's going to have really quality components inside. You can see we do have a power button on the front here. Also, have two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. Also, another USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type C port on here, our audio jack input, and our HDD. LED on the front there. Let's move on to the side and take a look and see what we have here. We have also some good ventilation on the side here, as you would expect. Get some good airflow going through here. On the other side, we have the same on this side here. So good airflow here. The bottom has some ventilation as well. And we also have those uh, two screw areas where we can screw the back plate onto so it can mount to a monitor or something like that. On the back of the unit as well, we have our DC in. We have our three USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports here. Also another free USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port. We have a display port 1.4 and also two HDMI 2.1 ports on here. And we have our padlock area there, which means we can lock this system to whatever device we put it to, to stop people from stealing it. And we also have that 2.5G uh, RJ45 LAN port there which means you've got plenty of decent inputs on this device. You can have multiple displays and you can have super fast speeds. So really, really decent uh, mini PC. Let's take a look inside so you can actually see what's inside and how you can upgrade this mini PC. Just remove the four screws. They don't actually remove, they just unloosen here and then you can pull the uh, unit apart. Just be careful when you pull this apart because there is a ribbon cable here. But once you get this separated like this, we can then take a closer look. And as you can see, this has been very well put together here. I really do like the construction of this one. And uh, you do have plenty of upgradability on this particular little device here. We have two M.2 slots on this one, which is going to allow you to put two terabyte NVMe drives in there, which is going to be really decent uh, for performance. And you can also put in there a two terabyte SSD in the top area there as well. It does have a Wi-Fi card underneath the actual NVMe drive there, and that is Wi-Fi 6E. And that is a tri-band Wi-Fi card we have in here. We have Bluetooth 5.2 on this little device as well. We have 32 gigabytes of Kingston 3200 megahertz RAM on here, which can be upgraded to 64 gigabytes if you want to, but you do have 32 gigs out of the box, which is really awesome. Here we have our Kingston uh, one terabyte NVMe drive here, and we also have our Wi Fi card right there. You can see it. So, really decent specs on this one. It does have an ASUS motherboard on here as well. We have another M.2 slot here, and this is where your SSD is going to go, and it will slot inside here. And you can have a two terabyte SSD in here as well with two M.2 slots. It really is a decent all round system. So, here we have one here. Just let me just show you where this slots in. It just pushes in. And then you can tighten it down with a couple of screws and it should be good to go. So we have our little ribbon cable here you have to be careful of, which attaches it to the other side. So all in all, a good all round system. So why I slot in the SSD here, I'm just going to quickly tell you that the Ryzen 9 5900HX has 8 cores and 16 threads with 16 megabytes of cache, which runs at 3.3 gigahertz and maxes out at 4.6 gigahertz with a TDP of 35 watts. Now you can see the SSD is just slotted in there. Lovely. You can fix this by screwing it down. I don't think I've got that in the right way, but you'll get the general idea. 
but basically this is the actual uh chip here you can have a look at it so the actual gpu on this is vega 8 graphics which means that you're going to be able to play games even some AAA listed games you'll be able to play on this mini pc which is absolutely mind-blowing having a look at the cpu z stats here you can see there is the actual chip there and you can now see the temperatures of this device right on the left hand side here and the amount of watts that it's pulling let me go ahead and uh, just go through here so you can see the main board on here is an asus board you can see it's made by asus and uh, you can go through and have a look at the memory and it will tell you the memory is made by kingston which i've already explained and it's 3200 megahertz of ram which runs on dual channel which means it's not just one stick we're getting two sticks of memory in here which is nice and moving on to the graphics section here I'll just quickly show you this one as well you can see here there is our vega 8 graphics and again this is pretty impressive mini pc just going to quickly run a benchmark here to show you how the cpu performs under load 100 load so you can see what the temperatures are so you can see now we're running the cpu z benchmark here and already the power has gone up and you can see it's drawing at the moment it's fluctuating 41.9 watts and then you can see here on the temperature side of things it's up to about 81 82 celsius around about there so it's sort of fluctuating it does make a little bit of noise when you're obviously pushing it to the maximum here and that's due to the fan trying to cool down the actual mini pc this is a mini pc after all and it needs to keep that system running cool so when you're pushing it to its limits like this which you're not going to hardly do all the time it's not going to be noticeable let's take a look at the 3d mark uh, time spy score which is 1488 which is pretty decent and as you can see there your score average and best down here remember this is a mini pc and you can see see the cpu and also the gpu uh, scores there also the night raid score which is your gpu is 15195 again it does give you an overall score there of cpu and gpu right there as well if you want to see those now that is the 3d mark score let's do the geekbench uh test here as well because i want to run that let's quickly run the geekbench 6 benchmarks here for the cpu you can see we're running on windows 11 pro here and uh, we're running this uh, benchmark you can see we've got the maximum cpu temperatures it is around about 78 76 80 it keeps going up and down and that's because it's being cooled but this is under immense uh, load because we're doing a benchmark here and the score we've got here for the cpu was on the single core 1919 and on the multi-core we're getting 7719 and uh, let's go ahead and run the gpu benchmark here we're going to be running this on vulcan here and we're going to go ahead and run this one and we'll see what sort of score we can get for the gpu so you can get an idea so already you can already tell this is quite a powerful mini pc for doing all your tasks that you might want to do on this mini pc like photoshop video editing and also gameplay i'll show you that a little bit later on but the thermals are pretty good here no thermal throttling and the score was 16,180 on the vulcan score here which is pretty good so there's the geekbench 6 scores here let's go ahead and run a crystal uh, disk mark score for the actual nvme drive here to see what sort of speeds we can get remember this does have two slots so you can put two drives in here and they will take up to two terabytes in each of those it does come with one terabyte in one uh, slot so we've got 3051 for the reads and 2600 for the writes there give or take a few little digits but you get the point pretty powerful uh, nvme drive in there and then let's run the Cinebench R23. Now, of course, you're not going to be torturing your mini PC the way I'm doing it here, one after the other, benchmark after benchmark. And again, this does put a lot of load on the system. And I've seen systems thermal throttle with uh, Cinebench R23, especially mini PCs. There's not many that don't thermal throttle at this sort of spec. And you can see this one's no different. It has got a bit of thermal throttling going on here. And that's because Cinebench is quite an aggressive benchmark tool. So the score there was 11,408 points for the Cinebench R23. And uh, yeah, I've pretty much seen this thermal throttling on a lot of mini PCs when you're running Cinebench. And that's why I tend to not run it as much on systems because it does absolutely torture the mini PC. And you're probably never, ever going to do this on your system. But just for your purpose, I am just running it 
just so you get a good idea of the score and the sort of thermals that you can expect under full load like that. Now, if you're running 4K movies, it can handle those no problem at all. Uh, this device can run multiple monitors and you should get a beautiful display uh, on your monitor with this many PC. No jerkiness or stuttering you're going to get from playback of all of your favorite movies. And uh, this is the purpose of this mini PC. It's not just built for movies. This mini PC is designed to replace your main PC. You can do video here. And you can also do virtualization. We can also do gaming on this mini PC. And we can also do design work like graphic design and even video editing as well. It's a very powerful system. So if it's just movies and surfing the web and a bit of YouTube, you're going to be fine with this. It's going to be super powerful. And again, at that sort of price point, it's a very good price point for a mini PC of this caliber. It's right up there uh, with... Uh, processing power as well and also memory and upgradability now we're going to also try to run these jellyfish programs i like to do this one because this also tests the system as well and we'll start off with the more easier one first where i stop and start it and drag it along and it instantly plays and it's having no problem at all at playing these files and these are high-end files these is 120 mbps 4k ultra uh 10 bit and this one is 400 mbps which is also 4K 10 bit, and it's having no problem. It's silky smooth. The playback is having no issues here whatsoever. And this is what you want from a mini PC. And you can see it there on the screen. Now, Big Buck Bunny, again, 4K streaming can handle this at all. You get a few drop frames right at the very beginning when it's first starting up. But once it stabilizes, you get no drop frames at all. And you should be able to enjoy all of your streaming on this device as well. So if Plex is your thing or maybe something else, you can do that as well. And if you're looking at gaming, it can also handle AAA listed games as well. Now this is quite a hard game to play, but I've used this deliberately so you can see the power of this little mini PC here. Now, of course it goes without saying, if it can handle this game, it's gonna be able to handle all of your retro games as well. And you're gonna get good FPS and good uh, upscaling on those games as well now this game is a pretty decent game to test because it is a very intense game for a lot of pcs to play and you can see here it's handling uh, this particular gameplay no problem at all now there's areas it drops under uh, 50 but 1080p gaming on this particular mini pc is doable on some games and even running at medium settings so you can do it on a lot of games and you can even go on high settings on some games, depending on what the game is. So it is a very capable uh, machine to play AAA listed games, uh, no problems at all. Now, obviously 60 FPS is probably the sweet spot where you wanna be, and this does hit 60 FPS and even goes into 80 FPS in places. Now, again, there is a lot happening on the screen here. Uh, so there's a lot of graphics going on here for this mini PC to handle. Remember. This is a mini PC at the end of the day. It isn't a desktop PC with a massive big graphics card in it. It's handling this particular game with no problem at all here. There's no jerkiness or stuttering on this game. And if it can handle games like this, you can get a general idea of what it can do. Now, I was going to show you loads of different types of games, but I thought it'd be better just to show you one really hard to play game for a period of time so you can get a general idea of what the frame rates are doing and the utilization of the system. And you can see here, it's doing a pretty good job uh, playing this game. And uh, I'm pretty impressed with it, to be honest, for a mini PC today in 2023 that can handle this. And there's even newer processors coming out uh, as we speak, uh, the newer generations coming out all the time. So these mini PCs are just growing in stature all the time. And they eventually probably could replace a desktop PC uh, for a lot of people. So anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it for this video. I'll leave all the links and information in the video description. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to my YouTube members. I appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now. <music>